Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I'm here with Zenra. Hello, everybody. And we're here in a new post world where I have over a thousand subscribers now. It's great. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I've done some videos. Here's the good thing about it is that, you know, the uh, when I was checking the videos to see which one survived the Are You Ready for Another Fucking Adventure apocalypse that I thought was about to happen to my videos, all of them survived except for one, which was the previous modcast, not modcast, to be released, which is for a very specific reason, I think, is why it got demonetized. That the one with the picture in it? Yeah, even though I heavily blurred it. I'll do it. it. <laughs> I heavily blurred it. That will it. do it. Yeah, that will do it. So I looked at that and said, fair enough. And then the other one was uh, any of the Captain Zubasa ones where I used uh, Yu Yu Hakusho footage. So <laughs> all those got demonetized because I don't own the rights to Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, yeah. yeah that, oh, like Yusuke knocking the supposed child Captain Tsubasa out of the way of the car. Yep. That got demonetized. <laughs> uh, which is That's pretty. Fair. That's fair. Fair enough. Yeah, all the ones that got uh, in some ways demonetized or like someone else took over. I'm like, that's fair. It's fine. Um, so yeah, only they... demonetized videos have never been public, so I don't know how they got. But I, <laughs> they're just old Dragon Ball Super memes that I made private. Nice. Of course, wouldn't let me upload them on Twitter because they were too big. Never been visible on my uh, my. Whatever. The only other thing that gets demonetized is when I have to put up Dragalia footage that has no audio in it. That is like no me talking. Um, it, and it always gets demonetized because every single song they just treat it as like, oh, you're just using this as an excuse to listen to this music blocked in every country. And I'm like, no. Yeah, Dragalia is scary to make content on. Like, <laughs> you got a gun the whole time with that music. Yeah. Dude. It's the price you pay for very good music is that the person who makes the music is like, actually, I'm a legitimate um, artist, so some of this stuff you're going to have to deal with. Um, but I cannot least... have this. Yeah, it's it's weird and it's bizarre, but hey, we're here. Here's another fun fact that I looked at when I was looking for everything. Did you know, Zen, that even though I want to say to be released is some of the most watched stuff in, I think, my catalog, it's also... No, it's also probably one of the most middling in terms of actual likes thrown on the video. <laughs> and that I th- doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I think it's because I never asked for, we never asked for any likes on these videos at all. So I'm like, why do these get so many views and then just not a lot of likes? The reason is, is that we don't ask for any. In every other video, I usually ask really for like them. Like this video, please. Yeah, there you go. So that's the short of it. Like these videos so that <laughs> the free ride is over, fuckers. You guys start liking some of these <laughs> to be released videos. Start pulling your weight, audience. Exactly. Come on. I need that sweet 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dude, that's like you're going to be paying for at least one taco from Taco Bell a month. Uh, you know how much I would, I love that. Do you know how bad things are that I would accept that? <laughs> oh, that sounds all fantastic to me. And with that, now with that weird uh, dive into how much I need money, let's go into <laughs> someone who totally needs, uh, who needed, who needs an arm. <laughs> Future go on. <laughs> uh, so here's we. So we got a brand new Future Gohan. His leader skill is the. Master Student Bon or Hybrid Sands, three key attack seventy percent and defense H HP and attack one hundred seventy percent, defense one hundred thirty percent. His passive skill is attack and defense one hundred percent, reduces damage received by fifty eight percent when HP is fifty percent eight or less. And then Master Student Bond category allies key plus one and attack and defense thirty percent. And then he transforms when he is. HP is 58% or more, and there's an ally on a team whose name includes Trunks, not Kid or GT, starting from the fourth or from the first fourth turn of battle, and then he turns into Super Saiyan. Very easy to do. Very yeah. easy to do. Um, and then his passive skill, once he's transformed, is attack 100%, reduces damage received by 58%, key plus one in attack and defense 30% per master student bond category ally attacking the same turn, and then launches an additional super attack when there's an android category enemy. 
And his categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Future Saga, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Super Saiyans, Android Slash Cell Saga, and Master Student Bond. And of course, because everyone's going to mention it, he still has his arm, both of his arms, because you can't have a one-armed person in your gotchas, apparently. Some weird Japanese law. I don't law. think that that's true. I don't think that's true, because Buku Giri match, all of his cards only have one arm. I think it's, I think a... it's just they don't want to take the time to create a sprite that only has one arm. But they usually do, like, weird dead arm for it instead. It's like, in my eyes, it's like, just get rid well, of the arm. It's Legend actually... Does, Legends does... Dead arm, but Buki Giri match arm. It's just the sleeve. Mm-hmm. Which is a shame because they really missed a missed opportunity for his transformation to be his arm being ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been. Yeah, bad. I tend to think that Future Gohan looks dumb arms, but then they don't use the one arm for anything. Like yeah. he does the one handed Kamehameha thing, and it's like, but why though? Because you have both your fucking hands. Also, oh, speaking of something. Uh, so people were wondering about this. Um, so Gohan uses the Kamehameha in his super attack. He does not have the Kamehameha as a uh, category, by the way. And it's because I just realized right. it's because his super attacks are called Explosive Cannon Blast and Explosive Dance. That's the reason why he doesn't have Kamehameha. He's not well, in the so category. It's not called Kamehameha. He just uses it in the attack. Yes. So now we know officially what actually dictates what goes into Kamehameha is that the super attack has to literally be Kamehameha somewhere in the title. So if you don't have right. it in your Fair title, <laughs> you don't get in. There you go. It's weird. And... Also, I like the, here's the best thing I think about this future Gohan, um, which is that they've made Master Student Bond, so now I 100% understand what LR Roshi is going to be. Because for the longest time, I assumed LR Roshi would be the DB um, LR leader, but I think now it seems like he's just going to get Master Student Bond, because that seems like he's like literally in the category. <laughs> Him, Kid Krillin, and Kid Goku are all yeah, in the category. Only thing that he does. Exactly. His only existence is being a... It's in his name! Yeah, Master Roshi. Literally, the most master of all people. Uh, other than that, I think his super text are... in English, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Muten Roshi, as he's known in Japanese. <laughs> master, if you're nasty. Anyway, the, <laughs> the thing about him is that... Uh, so this is, I think, the first time they've had very detailed super attacks that I kind of don't care what he does like i can't I, I, his 18 key is my opinion which one i really like the eight, the 18 key, or not the 18 key i'm a fucking idiot the transformed one okay yeah where he's super saiyan and he's like he does like the smashes them to the ground and he does the big blast and like, like rays are going past his face and stuff i think that looks awesome mm-hmm. all the rest of his are like detailed and like they're objective well done they're very cool looking yeah that's kind of the thing about it is i think they look very well done and very a lot of effort was put into it but it's starting to be like okay that was animated well but i don't actually care about what you did except for maybe again you said this the trans super transform super key which is a bit better which i'll agree on that one uh the other thing that's kind of weird about him is that he's a support in his i think he's better and this is maybe me personally i think he's better before transformation because he gets attack 100 percent up and Uh, like i guess yeah i can see it yeah he's kind of more of a support in his first one and then when he transforms he gets way more attack but then he also loses the 100 defense so I don't understand why they kept the attack 100% up, but then they got rid of the defense 100% up. I feel like if they're going to get rid of defense 100% up, maybe they could have at least done attack 120% up or something. Otherwise, it just kind of looks weird. I know maybe in actual use, he ends up being way... He's like, maybe he's too strong, and they were just trying to uh, prevent him from... They were trying to balance... The only cards that ever get balanced are Gohan cards. <laughs> they were trying to balance him. Uh-huh. <laughs> So I don't know, but yeah, that's uh, that's uh, Super Saiyan Gohan Future, uh, and technically just Gohan Future. How do you feeling about this, about this specific boy, about this Gohan? Um, him, I, I don't know why so many goddamn 
like future of, Gohan imp- cards. Importance. Yeah, because like like I get that everyone has cards. Like Zangia has multiple cards. I'm sure Gohan keep getting like these big category leader like important shit. I just don't get it. I I don't know. Yeah, I also don't get it because again, he's a character who's best known for making if anything the transformation should have been uh he should have been a switch card where he starts as um future gohan and then he dies and then you can become trunks <laughs> he becomes trunks that is the, I, funny. here let me i'm gonna give this one free to you dokon lr kid trunks future where you are base form super saiyan gohan and then you when you take too much damage he dies and you do the whole face down in the water thing and you do a full-on animation <laughs> of trunks his comes out. yeah and trunks comes out and then you get the full-on cry trunks and it's fantastic do it i think that'd be well, a fantastic switch cool. i would use that card yeah, that that's see that's the cool thing about the switch mechanic is that I kind of wish that he wasn't a transformation. Uh but I get if they're trying to hold off a bit. So yeah. I don't understand why he's so light either, but I it's not to say I don't dislike him. It's just one of those things. It's similar to like it's not why... even that he's so light cuz like I like him. But like why does he have so many super hyper relevant cards? relevant character that has so much high level exposure i want to say it's because just people love gohan i think that's actually the reason why is that people i feel like future gohan had more representation than super saiyan 2 gohan did until this lr though or high level representation of like top tier characters no it's true future gohan got a dokkan festival before super saiyan 2 gohan did so let that sink in for a bit when you think about like yeah technically the last one we got was a Dokkan Fest one that was the um the future category or something I, I forget the exact name of it but he used like future trunks characters in it uh and he's not very good either and he's also on this banner so we got to see a whole bunch of people go god damn it leave me alone <laughs> you useless ass god damn it, i pulled this piece of shit thing nobody wants you future gohan um so yeah glory I'm... of god gotcha so with that, with all that said, all that shit talked on future Gohan, uh, I think I'm going to give him around a 3.5 because I think that for the most part, I think he's still very good. Some of his animations are, again, hit or miss with one big hit and one kind of, that's okay. That's that's animated very well. I think he's a pretty solid unit, but I also can't bring myself to like care for him all that much. Other than the fact that he made a category that I think will eventually include a person that I like down the road. <laughs> Well, he came hot off the heels of like a with, the, with like you know people love the Cell Saga, and you've got Super Saiyan two Gohan who's got like some of the prettiest animations and he's got the animation sequence, and then this guy's just kind of lackluster and like normal. The best way I could I guess would have been nice if he had a, a Super Saiyan banner. I think people would be more excited. Yeah. He's kind of like that part in the porn where after the guy has already come, and then the lady just kind of licks the penis <laughs> to clean it off. That is his role in Dokkan, is that the, the everyone is already finished, and now it's just kind of a, now we're waiting for the next part. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, yeah. That, I was can see a, that. that was an extremely graphic detail of what I think he is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 3.5. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with those uh, parts. Yeah, I'll, I'll go up to four just because I really do love that one. Um, Transform Super. I think it's really good. Okay, so that's 3.7. Four. four is my limit. All right, combine that together, 3.5 and a four, and that's a 3.7. Perfectly respectable. Uh, and now we can go on to some questions. Let me start with... We actually... We had a YouTube question, I think. I have to go through this fucking Donkey Kong guy first in his giant boomer take on... Oh, angry, angry Donkey Kong guy. I, yeah. I'm actually going to just read what he says because I think it's hilarious. And uh, this comes from Burns... Bo- <laughs> this comes from Burns Boulevard. He asked the question from the bootleg Donkey Kong Country Game Boy Color God This Sucks video. <laughs> <laughs> he says, bootleg in quotes... And then, you kids have no idea. This is the 1999 Game Boy Cooler 
he's English, so there's a U in color, port of Donkey Kong Country. One of the best Game Boy Color titles. That's a lie. It was a huge achievement for Rare to squeeze Donkey Kong Country onto an 8-bit handheld with loads of extra features. It still looks and sounds beautiful today by Game Boy Color's standards. Save your dignity and delete this stupid video. So thank you for coming in, Burns Boulevard. And I have to say, how fucking old are you? <laughs> like, for where... Yeah, were you like forty five? That because we Fuck. were, we were, we and you literally grew up with Game Boys. Yeah, I was, I was seven, uh, eight. Sorry, in nineteen ninety nine. Like, yeah. how how are you like so fucking? In, like, what? Who who at that age? Oh, I can't believe of the processing fucking G this. Exactly, the genius that is this port of Donkey Kong Country on the Fucking Game Boy. Donkey Kong Country that plays and looks like shit. It doesn't even compare to the other Donkey Kong Country Game Boy uh, Color game, which is also bad, but not as bad. Donkey Kong Land, which is the game I wanted to play, and then I ended up picking that one instead because I couldn't remember the fucking name of Donkey Kong Land. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so to that guy, fuck off, and I'm going to have to add something, because that video gets a lot of people saying, this isn't a bootleg, this isn't a bootleg, and even though I tried to make it seem, I, it also, like that video, by the way, I don't know why people still watch it, because there's literally no thumbnail on it, there's no tags on it, there is nothing on it, <laughs> so it's just people super thirsty for Donkey Kong for the Game Boy <laughs> Color. People are out looking for Donkey Kong, bro. I was Funny like... To me. I don't I don't know why people see that video. It like I I could not like um not promote it more. We haven't promoted it and this is the most promotion that Donkey Kong video has ever gotten. I I don't understand the like out of boot like it's hyperbole. Calm the fuck down. Yeah. Also, have you seen that? It's not like, a super complicated language when it comes to this like fuck off. Yeah, and I'll also debate anyone who says that that Donkey Kong Country game, even at the time, was good for the Game Boy Color. Like, come on, we yeah, there. I can easily name a whole buttload of Game Boy Color games that are better than that. Fucking Monster in My Pocket is better than that game, and that game sucks. <laughs> And with that, thank you for the question, Boomer, whatever your name was. Uh, first question comes in from the actual to be released. Um, it comes from Appa, who says, I asked a question last episode. Maybe I asked before the recording of this episode. And then I said, I went looking for it, but I guess I didn't notice. I was kind of distracted by something. So ask us right here, and I'll, I'll put it on the episode. And he says, uh, Purple Wilkie, cheers, mate. Appreciate it. This is a good um, British person, is my uh, equivalent of it. We've got the warring of British people right now. One exactly. really nice one, one really awful one. Yeah, Appa is a fucking class act. 100 percent uh he says his question for to to be released what's more convoluted the possible upcoming passive meta e example lr gohan or summoning dark sage in Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> uh okay so is it dark sage where you have to have a dark magician and then you have to play this effect right yeah. while you have the dark sage in your hand no, so here's the he also linked us by the way Dark Sage's uh wiki page which I thank him for which I'll read now. I'm pretty positive. Oh, and it's an error 404. The, the internet does not want to see to, to summon Dark Sage. You need to have him. I think his effect is literally like if he's in the deck, you can get him from the deck. But you have to have Dark Magician on the field. You have to play Time Wizard, and then you have to call it right, and then you get the ability to summon Dark Sage by sacrificing Dark Magician. And then I want to say they nerfed his effect because it used to be that you could get um, a spell every turn and then they turned it to only on your turn. Something like that. Um, Dark Sage. Fucking Dark Sage, man. I um, Dark, Dark Sage is maybe the most... There's actually a couple cards from OG Yu-Gi-Oh! that are like, this card only works because the plot demands it to work right now. Uh, and what I mean by that is that, like, actually trying to get Time Wizard, getting his ability correct, and then being able to summon Dark Sage, which, by the way, that does not happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! 
Joey calls it right, and then Dark Magician gets old, and then he fucks up and doesn't know that old age makes Dark Magician stronger. <laughs> yeah, well, because Time Wizard was retarded, like... The way that Time Wizard worked in the show was just that it made your shit old, and sometimes that was good, and sometimes it wasn't. That was it. Yes. Like, against the Harpy Ladies, it, like, turned them all into old hags, and then they got fucking wrecked by the Thousand Dragon. Uh, Baby Dragon turned into an old-ass dragon. Dark Sage was, like... <sighs> but, yeah. Um... I think we're all, we're, it's probably easier to get LR go and actually, hmm. no, because I've been able to summon Dark Sage before, and it was pretty funny. I guess the difference is that when you get LR Gohan onto the field is that you, chances are, have won the Dokkan fight that whatever you were fighting in. Oh, where, that's true. It's basically over at that point. Yeah, but if you summon Dark Sage, all that happens is, like, on their turn, they're like, okay, he's the only monster on your field. Um, because, no, because Time Wizard would still be on there. I was going to say, you could just fissure him, but no, then Time Wizard would be destroyed. Maybe Dark Sage is the strongest Yu-Gi-Oh card because he's immune to fissure. <laughs> uh, but there's, like, ways, the way Yu-Gi-Oh is played now, there's ways for him to be removed while he was still in your deck or, like, during mid-activation of the effect. Like, there's so many ways to stop oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, Dark, Dark Sage is not a relevant Yu-Gi-Oh card by any means. No. Um, I don't think Dokkan will ever get that far in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh, the Yu-Gi-Oh quality of just, like, it's, I don't think people understand how hard it is to win a coin flip in Yu-Gi-Oh, because you only win coin flips when the opponent needs to lose the coin flip. Does that make sense? Whenever you need it, you don't win it, and whenever the opponent needs it, he doesn't win it, and that's the only way you win a coin flip? <laughs> Uh, but thank you for the question, Ep. I hope you answered it. That was extremely good, and I'm glad that you fought to get that <laughs> to get that on the show. Yeah, that, that was a question that deserved to be heard. Exactly. Uh, now we'll go on to Twitter questions, which I don't know what the fuck was up with people when I asked for some Twitter questions, but they were on some weird shit at the time, and you'll understand as we go progressively more uh through the thread so let's start with uh, my good old hey. sister maths who just posted a picture of yoshi who says i asked who joe was and it's just yoshi very tired playing tennis all right let hey. me let me send you the actual picture just because like this is all she sent like i don't know anything more um that i could add to this or how we can a answer this question because usually she asks us, how does this dog look, or how does this look? That's just it. I asked who Joe was. I don't know who Joe is. I don't, I don't know, know who Joe is. I don't know Joe's is either. But thank you, sister, for the question, for the support, I guess, <laughs> for the for to be released. It almost feels like, oh, actually, 100%, my sister does not know what we do on this show. Yeah, she figures out a way to support us regardless. Yeah, I, I am very sure that she does not know anything about the show. <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh, next question, technically a statement, comes in from Toasto Lantern, a.k.a. Toaster of Fun, who says, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say you're welcome. You're all welcome. I think he's addressing the people in general. I believe he's addressing the people in regards to the, on the last episode. Yeah, and which I have to say thank you, Toast, for uh, getting my video the demonetized. only demonetized podcast. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Next question comes from Rio Nux Busijima, who's following in the pattern of my sister. Uh, decided to link a picture. I'm just going to show you what this picture is because there's no way for me to explain it. I'm going to try, though. It is a uh, mem, and it says some oh, chalky it's, milk. It's because... giving you chalky milk, yeah. <laughs> because you're epic. And it's a dupe. <laughs> <laughs> it is a dupe, mem. That's so fucking funny. I didn't realize That's that was the a dupe. fucking funniest part is that it's a dupe. <laughs> All the water in her fucking hand. I'm gonna have to provide some fucking pictures on this one because so many of these you can't understand without the proper context. What is the time record of this? Okay, 24 minutes. I got it. Uh, thank you, brother. That got a whole bunch of likes <laughs> because he posted it at Peter <laughs> Galia hours. 
Um, next question comes in from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, who is really more just saying, congratulations on hitting 1,000 subs, and he has a crying, what looks like a crying uh, Merge Zamasa with Mascara <laughs> picture. <laughs> Another fantastic. That's pretty funny. Yeah, pretty good. Um, I said thank you. Um, I didn't realize that he was asking this in to be released, the to be released questions. Uh, next question comes in from Nighthawk, which, by the way, I just want to show, throw out a quick, uh, funny story about Nighthawk, who went into the Discord for Trash Alliance, the number one uh, Discord for your Dragalia needs if you're in Trash Alliance or would wish, wish to be trash, who asked, so no questions for to be released today? And I said, I'm sick. I'll throw it up soon. He must have an extremely important question to give. His question is, how many likes can we get for our boy in blue? And it is a gif of of uh, Vegito, Vegeta Blue, Super Saiyan Blue, laughing. And he was able to get one like on it. So the answer is you could get one like <laughs> for this question <laughs> that you were so gung ho for. Nighthawk, thank you very much. I appreciate your support and I love you. Keep <laughs> enjoying Dragalia, I hope. <laughs> Um, next question. This is actually a legit question that you can ask. The first one in first one of many, uh, that's a lie. The question is thoughts on the current state of pitter patter pop. I'm going to throw it up to you, Zen. How are you currently feeling about pitter patter pop at the moment? It's it's good. Um, it's a little bit slow, but it was right before the anniversary. So it's one of those things where like, oh, because they're going to vomit like all the shit on you right away, right after that, you know? Yeah. I, I can't fault Pitter Patter Pop for doing that when literally Jergalia did the exact same shit like yeah. one month before. Every, every every game slows down right before a giant celebration. Like it just is what it is. Yeah, uh, but it's it, it's mm-hmm. trending. The the anniversary looks like it's gonna be pretty badass. They're giving away like a hundred free summons. Nice. Is that a hundred single summons or multi summons? Oh, well, it's a hundred tickets. Oh, okay. okay. That's pretty good. I like I like the trend of new gacha games saying here's a shit ton of multis. I think yeah, that here's just all the stuff that you could want. Yeah, especially having to deal with Dokkan where it's like if you spend 150 stones, get a free multi. It's like, well, what if I don't have 150 stones? I guess you're not getting that free multi. <laughs> guess you're not enjoying this celebration, are you? Yeah, no, you're not. Here, have a hundred stones because the true players of Dokkan, the whales, supported us. <laughs> not you. Fuck off. Uh, not you, you piece of shit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, the thing I like the most about Pitter Patter Pop is that more than any gacha game, I feel like I can just pick it up and keep going from where I left off. Like, I never feel like... Um... Yeah, it's it's very good for just, like like, like a little bit. Exactly. Like, it's very good. There's not a lot of gotchas like it because most gotchas are built around the fact of, like, oh man, you got to be playing every day. Here's a brand new mode. Here's a brand new this. Here's a brand new that. Where Pitter Patter Pop is just like, all right, let's get it done. Here's Josuke. Yeah, it, it's nice to have a gotcha where it's fucking beating you to death. Yeah. And I think, um, like, gotchas too, where, like, I want to play. But they all demand so much time that, like, if you play enough of them, it, it progress in all of them. Mm-hmm. So you have to cut down on what you're doing. Otherwise, you're never going to get anywhere in the ones that you want to play the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, again, very positive on uh, Pitter Patter Pop. I'm looking forward to the anniversary and whatever comes in it. Should be fun. <clears throat> uh, a lot of theories going around, but they... um. And all of them confirming point- that the anniversary unit is going to end up being a part five character. Really, not the? No, they're not going to release a good Dio like everyone wants. I guess not. That's what everyone thought it was going to be Dio, and then I thought it was going to be uh, because Josuke and Yuya Fugami back to back right before the anniversary. Mm-hmm. It, they said that character is coming, and he is from part five. Okay, that's and the data. Uh, there was a about- Akio and Narancha. Hmm. So it could be one of them. But, but also, I guess that doesn't necessarily mean it is for sure the anniversary unit. One anniversary unit. Like, like maybe the anniversary is like a month long thing. And so there's four anniversary units. I don't know. But we'll, we'll see. It's going to do a um, or collection where the anniversary units were Kaniku Man and Ichigo. 
<laughs> That's right. I forgot that. Oh, I never forgot. Or it was <laughs> Gohan was the anniversary. Yeah, and where yeah they re- they dropped the super hot fire Gohan, and they were like, by the way, this isn't this isn't the anniversary unit. We're just releasing them, and there was and yeah. everyone was like, wow. That's and? that's great, and little did we know the reason they released it because they were like, "We're drowning! Help, <laughs> please, anything, <laughs> please save us!" Yeah, if only they had. Do. Uh, if only your multis weren't fucking horrendous to spend on. <laughs> if only you didn't cost. Oh, they more. were so bad. bad. No vendors. Um, they... v- vendors saved me from going broke when Or Collection was at its peak. Vendors saved Or Collection. I think they it only lived as long as it did because of those. To be honest, like I, I would be buying that shit at full price. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you'll never find a more I think positive look to vendors than an or collection, just because or collection was one so expensive and two, uh, they the vendors came in like a fucking godsend because it was like oh my god I don't have to spend a hundred dollars for one and a half multis. Yeah for one and a half multis with like terrible rates too they weren't even like good no, so it's not like you were gonna consistently get what you wanted easily as long as you multi like you were you were just fucked mm. it was terrible yeah yeah uh so thoughts on ppp doing better than or collection was at that point so <laughs> uh, true next- yeah. Next question. You're gonna need this uh, photo right here as I ask it. So you'll see it right there. Who is a worthy opponent for this Kermit? Sticking to the JoJo Mrs. Piggy theme. with Mrs. Piggy with Dio hair. Ah, oh, damn it. That'd be very good. That would be the ultimate fight back. Who is? Does that mean? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of who Fozzie Bear would be in the <laughs> in the specific Stardust Crusaders. <laughs> It's uh Joseph, old Joseph. Fuck, you're right. And then that would mean, oh, who would be, oh, who would be the other? Who would be Kaku- Kakuin? And I'm still a little bit sick, so I can't remember the Polarith. There we go. Ha, ah, remembered it. And, be- and Abdul, he forgot Abdul. Everyone forgets Abdul, though. I <laughs> remember everyone forgets. Abdul. Yeah, I'm not holding it against you. And Iggy, obviously, Iggy is Ralph the dog, <laughs> so he has two forms. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, Polnareff would be, come on, I'm trying to, maybe Gonzo? Yeah, Gonzo. <laughs> Gonzo the Great seems like Polnareff, Polnareff? <laughs> And for... That's funny. Yeah. I could do this all day, so we're not gonna continue, but totally, uh, Miss Piggy Dio would probably be the number one shot to it. To the anti, um, Kermit, uh, Jotaro. And if I wasn't so sick, I would totally bust out my sick Kermit the Frog impression, but we don't got time for that. <laughs> uh, next next time, viewers. Exactly. Look forward to Kermit. The... Have I ever told you? No, nobody knows this. That me and my brother specifically do Kermit the Frog accents back to each other to annoy my sister, and we'll do. Oh, <laughs> but I like that. <laughs> yeah, that so we'll good. Yeah, so we'll start like someone will say something on the TV, and then I'll say it back in the Kermit the Frog accent, and then my brother will pick up and go like. Hmm, hmm. So we'll both be dueling hmm. And my sister's like, I just want to see fucking 90 Day Fiance, and you guys are annoying me. <laughs> and it's great. It's, I think, the, the, it, the reason why I don't do solo records more with my brother is because it would just evolve into both of us laughing at each other, and then <laughs> nothing would advance. Nothing would ever get done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you were fortunate enough to watch the uh, two seconds, the, the, the storybook version of our Banjo Tooie stream, um, <laughs> where were we? Where only a couple people saw it, it was never saved. Our internet is not good enough to actually legitimately stream. Zen was there. You were there for the, the whole time. Yeah. You were there for the creation of uh, a being of LGBT, which was Let's Go Banjo Tooie. <laughs> <laughs> And so it was great. The point is, is that I love. I thought, my... I thought it was legendary game Banjo Tooie. <laughs> oh, that would work too. There's so many good. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that there's a lot of assholes on Twitter who are anti LGBT, I would totally put down. Yeah, I I support LGBT, and it would be uh, <laughs> Let's Go Banjo Tooie. <laughs> 
but I don't want it to be seen as like <laughs> there's once the world is better, the world will be ready for that tweet. They will understand. Once the world has improved. Exactly. Once the world is ready to handle my Let's Go Banjo Tooie agenda, <laughs> then then the world will be ready. Uh, next question comes in from my at Xenoblade twenty twenty, who says, "Why will Dragalia give me Galacleo on the first multi?" Spoiler alert: He asked this four days ago. He did not pull Galacleo. Thanks. Yeah, and now he gets to do the unfortunate thing of which I think happens every single time one of the big main girls is a limited character is that the second you go into any co-op, everyone has them. When Halloween Ellie was released, trying to do anything co-op in that required a light team meant that you were fight you were fighting with three Halloween Ellies. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like Halloween Ellie though. She is still very good. Um can't wait for her to return and completely drain anything I was saving for Mega Man. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry that you didn't get Galaclea. To be fair, I don't. I also don't have Galaclea. I would probably be able to beat Omega. Ever. You lucky fuck. You have almost all the... <laughs> don't you have almost all of the... Um... Yeah, everyone but uh, Lucas' sister. Damn it. So, uh, Cerise is the only one you don't have. It's crazy that so many people started the game now and have all the Gal units, and I still only have two. And I've been playing since day one. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometime. Uh, sorry about that, Mai. Next question comes in from Vibecheck and says, Why did Jagralia Lost have the best first year anniversary compared to other gotchas? Let me just say, we did just talk about the fact that Or Collection released Kaniku Man and, Ich- and Ichigo as their banner first year units. And they gave away Yoko Kurama if you were good at PvP. Uh, Yoko Kron was so good. Ah, uh, he was. Uh, I don't know. I actually started to think about... I tried to think of, like, is it? did it have the best first year compared to any gacha? And the, the answer is, of the ones I've played, I think it's up there. But, I'm not, again, my feelings towards our collection is still pointing me towards our collection, and I understand that that is a, a fleeting nostalgia memory, but that's the way it's kind of rolling for me. Uh, how do you... F- uh, the, the free mold... Stuff it's given away. Um, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It is up there for sure. Yeah, it was very good. the The event of it is extremely good. I I still think that sometimes raids are a little too long, especially when they're story related. And this is one of the few ones where I actually want to know the, the legit end of the story, and I won't get it for like another couple days. That's kind of annoying, but that's yeah. Just... And it, it again with Dragalia too. It doesn't help that like the same. That's a problem they still haven't really fixed. No. Uh, so it would have been nice to see that from the anniversary where they were to introduce something new. But they were very gen. It was a very generous anniversary. So if that's what your is, I I think it's hard to say that this anyone's better than this one. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it's solid. They did mention Mega Man, which is awesome. That's still the the number one thing they mentioned was that there is a Mega Man collab coming, but it's not coming till December, which is kind of the thing. It was kind of like that, like an E three press conference where they say this is coming next year, <laughs> but we wanted to mention it just now to get you excited. And at the moment, you're like, oh, that's awesome, and then you have to, and then like a couple days later, you go, oh shit, it's far away. <laughs> It's not exactly right after, which is what I would have hoped. But yeah, it's good. It's a good first year. I'm glad a lot of people picked it up, and I'm glad that I was able to make the Trash Alliance Discord too. A fun old place to go. Uh, next question comes in from Zorark Master 26 and says, How strictly or loosely do you think a unit in any gacha should be made should context of the scene or lore if they have one overcome making improvements on the unit Example, Hilda not having recoil or Super Saiyan 2 Gohan not needing 16, or do you think it's important to stay to lore? Okay, so he's basically asking is, should gotcha units stick 100% to lore? And the answer... Um, It depends on the game, and like, it's well designed or not, like... Hilda isn't that she has recoil damage. The problem with Hilda is that recoil damage is ridiculous and it's not well tuned at all. 
terribly designed. There's no way that nothing about it is good. Recoil damage in regular Pokemon games isn't world, right? Like stuff runs Flare Blitz in regular Pokemon games. Yeah. God help you if you have recoil damage because you do like every time you attack. It's just not. It's it's not Gohan thing. That's kind of overstated. Sixteen. It, it, that's just like the easier method, I guess, of of getting the transformation. Yeah. Like holding fast to lore. I think that's more of just like lore irrelevant. Like nod. Gohan is more lore mandatory than the Gohan is. Path has to have trunks. Yeah. Whereas with the Super Saiyan two Gohan, it's more just like out if you use him this, this way. Here's like a lore relevant shout out. It, it would be like if Goku needed it's needing lore when it's like mandatory. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I get what you're saying. Um we we're gonna mention it because anytime its name gets brought up we get remembered of its memories. But I think War Collection handled the lore side of things <laughs> very well. Uh, because it was always like for like a good example is that when Mihawk was released, he like took almost no damage from any swordsman, and that's because he was specifically based on like at least his look to me was the base off the fact that um, um, Zoro when he fought him, he couldn't do shit against him, so that's why he's like no right, swordsman. It's Mihawk is the strongest swordsman in the world. That's his whole thing. Yeah. So also he he just like hard bodies other swordsman units. Exactly. So I think doing stuff like that made uh makes sense to me like a lot of or collection had stuff like that like how the athlete all like literally work as a team with like everyone buffing everyone back to back like they were up yeah do stuff or like uh the red team being the fucking brash punk asshole characters typically really good at beating up the nerds (laughs) <laughs> yeah they had cool headed which was all about like um basically making it impossible to play against them because they were just like so impossible to get to like light it was like literally impossible to get to light unless you were like super aggro pushing for towards them or something oh, and then like uh blue which was we like a weird like the rival like the speedy fast rivals yeah, yeah. They had um they had the greatest thing which was Senna from Ice Shield 21 who's known for being extremely fast and being able to make touchdowns out of nowhere. He literally just started with his special attack. <laughs> he had the fastest cooldown in the entire game of how about I just do it now? Yeah, the how about I just start the match with it? Yeah, so uh, the answer is that Or Collection got it right, and then everyone else is kind of like they have to make they have to make. I think for one thing, you have to make sure that the thing you're making in the game uh, makes sense for your game. I think that's the basic thing of it. Like if yeah, it just has to to fit, like the Gohan and Sixteen thing is because it doesn't because Dokkan doesn't have gameplay. Dokkan like the gameplay in Dokkan is building your team. Yeah. The pilots from there on. So when you hamstring that for the sake of lore, I, I can see people being like, "This is dumb. It doesn't add anything." It, but putting lore on your hands, the game play, not make it worse. Yes, exactly. Uh, and thank you for the question. And next, we've got not a lot, a whole lot of questions. So let's get this done. This next question comes from Constellar Phoenix, who says, "If you had a requiem stand, what would it do?" Um. I don't know. Uh, everything. That's my answer. The answer is it would do everything. <laughs> yeah. It, it would just all over heaven would be mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, mine would be the ability to make anyone do sick drop kicks, And that, that's my <laughs> requiem stand. Uh, and the name of my stand would be called Dropkick Murphy's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, perfect. Sometimes it's too easy to make a stand in JoJo. <laughs> Next question comes in from Don, who says, What's your favorite Dragalia and Fake Grand Order unit? I'll answer the Fake Grand Order unit. It's just Quetzalcoatl. In terms of favorite Dragalia unit, it's Mim. So there you go. Funny enough, they share the same Japanese voice actress. So let that <laughs> just sink in for you. Really? That's funny. Yeah. 
How about you? You can answer the Dragalia part. Pretty simple. Yeah, I, I don't like fate. Yeah. But uh, probably Halloween Ellie. Yeah, she's real good. Yeah, damn it. I'm really going to have to pull for her when she comes back. I really don't want to because I have someone that uses her ability, but she's just so cool. And I love the way she The only looks. reason that I don't use her is um, the bride one better like for gameplay. I think she has better skills. Yeah. Because she works with what I need for my team. Because she's like Prince and I have Gayla Cleo who do like all my damage. So I don't need someone who's just going to come in and like throw down. But with uh, Ellie's like, like support buffs and stuff while still being able to do good damage, uh, she just brings more to my team. And she's still Ellie's end, so it's okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, okay, let's see. When was the last time you played the world tournament and why? And the answer is never. Not since. I actually recently played it just because I think um, I go for this fit of Dokkan where I have specific bursts of Dokkan play where um, when I'm super into Dokkan, I'll go... I'll give the world turning another shot and then immediately regret it. But during my peak apathy towards Dokkan, I don't even look at the world tournament screen. Yeah, I, I haven't touched the world tournament in God only knows how long. Even when I'm playing, I don't do that. But like... The world tournament is trash. And anyone who likes the fact that they constantly lock good it's Dragon the, Ball units. Like, there's nothing fun about it. No, and it makes me angry that they lock fucking Dragon Ball units behind it. Good ones, too. SSRs. Like, I want to yeah, fucking run. Yeah, weird, because, like, fuck's sake, why only Dragon Ball? It's so, it sucks so much, because I would love to run the SSR Ox King and the SSR Android 8, but I can only run them if I run for this fucking, um terrible free to uh not free to play but free gotcha where you have to run tickets and there's no guaranteed ssr and then also when i do get them they have fucking the free to play stats on the potential system because they're technically free units oh oh yeah they don't get the buffs uh it's so infuriating it's unbelievably shitty the world tournament sucks and it should stay suck um Last question comes in from Ignit, who says, how does it feel to finally have joined the four-digit subclub? What are your next goals you want to reach? Also, how do you like my kitty? And I'll quickly show you the kitty, because it's a very good kitty. Um, uh, network connection error. Nice try. Thanks. Send. It's a good kitty. Yeah. One musketeer kitty. That's a very good kitty. Uh, it reminds me of Puss in Boots and that interview where uh, Antonio Vanderas got very uh, serious about Puss in Boots and diversity in Hollywood, which I was like, you're right. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you are technically the least uh, racist animated uh, he Mexican hero character. <laughs> it's Puss in Boots and then it's Speedy <laughs> Gonzalez. <laughs> <clears throat> And then right below that is Slow Rodriguez, the brother of Sweetie Gonzalez, the cousin of Sweetie Gonzalez. Um, it feels good to finally have four digits, four digits sub count, uh, to finally get to the one thousand. You know, uh, it's been a goal since I started about getting serious about maybe two years ago. Technically, the actual push for me to be on uh, my own solo stuff started whenever that D Free Glover video got released. That's the the breaking point of it all, and I saw people were like saying like, "Oh man, this is funny," and I was like, "Maybe I can do this." And from that point on, I it started with like five hundred sub count, and then I went up from there. Uh, and it's been a hell of a climb up here, and now I need to, I don't know what comes next. I guess try and reach five thousand. I don't know. Trying to release a thousand. It is. You heard him, boys. Let's get. Let's get it till we get there. Um, the actually thing, the actual thing I would like is just like, and it's such a weird thing to have is just like the a normalization between videos, where I feel like enough people watch all the videos throughout. It's a weird thing to have, but like if I could have, um, let's say like two hundred, like at least like a consistent two hundred views, and it's between 
the weirdest videos and this is an extremely hard thing to do because i play a lot of like weird like there's no way in hell all the people who watch me play gotchas are gonna watch me play Mega Man x that's just not gonna happen um so i need to get a higher sub count to where the point where uh when it reaches 200 the gotcha stuff should be in the uh 400s or so i think that's fair so that's kind of my next goal i think uh and then also think i also i, I should do. so uh ignit uh slid into my dms the way i assume he does for everyone <laughs> for anything uh, and he's been very helpful with getting me to 1000. I have like one person here who's a super hardcore fan of his, um, that's almost that comments on a lot of the videos now, which is, it's weird to look at and think like, okay, uh, this person came specifically for this person, but he's sticking around and like giving me a shot. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But the basic thing I'm trying to say is that, uh, he would like to be, um, on an episode of to be released and I would be all for it. I just need to know if he could actually show up and record the same time we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like, I'm I'm down for the idea. The problem is always, can you adapt to our time schedule? <laughs> Miserable time frame, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if... It's the... random, it seems. Yeah, kind of random. The one constant is... 5 p.m. California time, and even then, it doesn't it's always. The, it's start. like the hyperbolic time chamber where it's like it's freezing. The next minute, it's on fire. <laughs> it goes up. Sometimes it goes down. 100. percent That's how we record in a vacuum, and it's very weird. So we'll see if we can try and get him on here. Uh, the funny thing is that I'm pretty sure he's no, he does do Dokkan stuff. He does like that weird um. Uh, what the hell is that called? It's not called a private server. That stuff with Dokkan where you just play... Change yes, Change Injection. There you go. So he plays Dokkan that way. I mean, it's not like it's... Like, we barely play Dokkan, so it's not like <laughs> playing Dokkan is a sudden... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Needing to play Dokkan has never been what To Be Released is about. No, exactly. If I could get fucking um, your good buddy, Xavier Woods, on the show, I would not give a fuck if he did not play Dokkan. Uh, my, my best friend friend xavier woods your best friend xavier woods who went through a rough night on wednesday of uh, wednesday friday when he had to unfortunately see his friend lose to the most bullshit uh fight in wrestling history that's not true that's still technically bret hart because he actually got fucked over um it's the only piece of wrestling lore that i know is the bret hart thing no it's true the montreal screw job went beyond anything that wwe has ever done uh but yeah Thank you for the question. Thank you for the support. And we'll see if we can get you on next time. And again, that's a very good kitty. I like that cat. It is a good kitty. Yeah. That's a high quality kitty. I, I really like, I like the hello. I'm part of the internet. I really like baby cat photos. I really like kitty photos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. That's an episode of TV released. Uh, I want to, I was going to say, I want to thank Zenrod for joining me. I've never done thank yous before. I don't know why I'm doing them now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, was, you know, it was great to be here. It was really... <laughs> Suddenly I get uh, 1,000 of something going to my head and starting to treat it like it's an actual oh, thing. No. <laughs> Not it. I'm, I won't start treating this like an actual <laughs> show until <laughs> these fuckers start leaving a like. You hear me? Start liking <laughs> these videos if you made it this far throw another like on it keep liking it keep doing all that good thing if some for some reason you watch this and you don't subscribe to me subscribe and now let's end the show remember everyone don't play dokkan because if you do play dokkan you go to hell before you die that's no good goodbye everyone <laughs>